where them goats at. I don't see them anywhere. But they should come running. Goats! Here, yeah, goats! Where they at? What are you... What are you guys doing back there? Do a little squad? Just hanging out, huh? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Man, you never know. When your goats disappear, God knows what they're up to. But anyway, not what this video is about. So, welcome back to the channel, guys. My name's Mike. And today we're going to talk about, well, first of all, how beautiful it is outside with it being fall. Man, it's, uh, it's too bad that it's like 80 some degrees out, but nonetheless, it's still gorgeous. But what we're talking about today is yet again, more projects. Yes, more projects. Now, as you see, I was just up at the goat pen slash chicken pen to uh, kind of scope some things out because we've got new additions to our current additions that are gonna need a little bit better living quarters. Check it out. Yep, we hatched about 10 chickens. Uh, if you guys caught the last live stream, you would have uh, we would, caught what we were talking about. We actually had 13, but we had a couple die off. But yes, we uh, we hatched 10 chickens, and I think that's gonna bring us up to a total of like 28 chickens, laying hens that is, or laying birds. So we gotta make, oh, corn feeders going off. I got that set a little too long. And don't worry, I'm not hunting off my front patio. We uh. We hunt the back side of this property, but I like putting the, the feeder up here so we can watch the deer from the front patio. But like I was saying, yeah, 28 chickens. We need a little bit bigger living quarters for them. And I have to set up winter quarters for the goats. Now saying that, there's gonna be a lot of work involved. You guys obviously seen my chicken house that we, uh, we actually moved here and we outfitted to raise our meat birds, but it is going to be a new chicken coop. And with chicken coops, I got to put a fence around this whole thing. So it's time to start building fence and tearing old down up there at the log cabin because that's going to be the new goat house. Now, I've already installed this really cool chicken door that is electric actuated and it has a light sensor up top there and even has a safety guard. So. It doesn't turn into a guillotine for chickens when they're trying to get in there and that door might be coming down. But I have to go plug that in so I could show you guys because we don't have constant power in here right now. So give me one second. Well, I covered the sensor on this thing, but it still doesn't want to close. It was working perfectly last night, flawlessly. But I'm going to walk you through it and show you how this thing, uh, this thing works. So what I have up here is I have a light sensor right up here and that will detect the ambient light which sends a signal to the inside box inside, which powers this actuator motor, which is like a screw motor. And uh, it has a little worm gear in there that turns and it opens and closes the chute. Uh, rides on two little guide rails. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty fancy, but what I like right here, I think it's a little overkill, but uh, it's kind of cool. But it has a proximity switch right here. So what this does, it reads about halfway in the middle. And if a chicken's going in here, it stops this from coming down and, and hurting your chicken. Let's go take a look at the inside. So, don't mind the mess. She's a work in progress. We got to get her outfit, and there's a lot of work that has to happen inside here. But let me point out, let me show you how this thing works on the inside. I still have some wires tied up, but here's the control box right here. Now, you got to be a little kind, because like I said, I got tools everywhere because there's a lot of work that has to happen in here. When I was raising the meat birds, what I was doing is I was pulling these side things up, I don't know, these side window skirts, you wanna call them. I would pull them up and I'd anchor them to the top because the meat birds didn't have 
a place or needed a place to roost. Well, with my hens being in here, I have to create a roost for them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this back bench over here and we're gonna make those laying boxes. We're gonna build a roost going up from the back wall coming down and then from here, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this side yet. Maybe more laying boxes, I don't know. Maybe I'll do storage of some sort for feed. I'm not quite sure yet. But the only way this is gonna work is unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to take these, uh, these little door, trap door window coverings down. So the plan is, is instead of opening from the inside, I'm gonna make them open from the outside and then we'll put little kickstands on them so they stand out like this. And it'll be like a little, little rain fly for them. And then we're gonna put that uh, hardware cloth all the way around the window opening so they can stay safe. Now, the other thing that I did is I moved my compost pile to where my chickens are gonna be. I want, I'm gonna want them to scratch and get in there and manure that all up and help break it down. So, eh, my son will be happy about that because he hates going down to the compost pit, which is, all the way on the other side of my barn there. He doesn't enjoy that at all. Especially when he procrastinates and, he, and it's dark outside. But I'm not really sure how far I'm gonna take this fence. Or really, here's the bigger question. I don't know how big I should make this coop. Something tells me, make it as big as I possibly can. So I think I'm gonna go up to where that boot's at right there. We're gonna go on the outsides of these trees. We'll run it all the way down past the burn barrel not up to the burn barrel because i want to be able to back out a little bit and then uh see where the burn pile is right there and they got that nice straight ash tree we're going to stop the fence down there bring it corner it out and then bring it up the back side there unfortunate part about uh, that ash tree man i trimmed it up and she looks healthy she's a healthy looking tree and maybe you guys can help me understand what's going on because as far as i know this tree was doing very well top notch no problems at all but we have a bad problem with these ants that love to eat these ash trees and this is what's going on the bark is literally coming off the tree i have no idea why but it looks like it sun blistered of some sort. And I'm not sure if it's diseased or what's going on with this ash tree, but it's concerning. Another concerning thing is, is when I light this up, that tree is not very far from it. And this thing is going to get hot, people. Trust me, it's gonna get super hot. And I think I just might, might kill the tree by burning this pile. If I kill the tree, it's gonna make great firewood, nonetheless. But if I get rid of the burn pile, I was thinking, what if I took the chicken fencing and I brought it all the way down here and then all the way to the corner there and we move it all the way up to the backside of the coop. That's a lot of fencing, but I'm gonna have at least 30 chickens. But chickens aren't everything. Chickens, they come, they go. What I need to know is what should I make this fence out of? Should I make it out of goat fencing? I mean, I guess I could, it's more expensive, and then I can put any animal I want down here. Or should I just do the, the little better quality, not quite cheap dog fencing, but it's a little better than dog fencing. Um, it's cheaper and it's perfect for chickens. Uh, goats, not so much. Uh, I know it's over, over at uh, Cog Hill. He does a, he he uses that kind of fence that I'm thinking about using. He doesn't seem to have any problems. The goats that I have now, they really love rubbing up against the fence. Dog fencing is not going to hold up to that. I can always put a hot wire on there, but then again, I'm not really sure that I'm going to put goats down here in the future. But I always want to be prepared just in case because plans always change, and I might just. Put a different animal down here who knows but i want to be prepared and i only want to do this once so you guys let me know what you think in the comments give me a little guidance and uh maybe help that make that decision because i'm buying uh buying fencing this weekend 
I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Maybe, maybe. Guys, I swear to God, it works. It works. I tried it like a million times. I trust me, it works. I just don't know why it's not working right now. A few moments later. Oh, are you kidding me? I swear, I had this thing working last night. Today, this week in general has just been crazy. You know, it's just, it's been nuts. Nothing's been going right. I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. But y'all don't need to hear about that. I don't know why it's not working, people. I don't know why. I'm about to lose it on this thing because it was working just fine last night. Oh my gosh. Oh. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Don't do your one on the phone. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe I'll come back out here and catch it when it's dark. Maybe this sensor is so, so stinking smart it can tell when you're covering it up, but I have never experienced a photo sensor or photo cell that was so sensitive that it could uh detect when it was being cheated just can't believe it two years well, it was about time that thing started working i thought maybe you were pulling my chain who knew all it took was a little electrical tape to cover that sensor up I never had a photo cell be so sensitive like that before. Oh man. Well guys, that about wraps it up for this episode. And uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I know a lot of you guys aren't subscribed. I don't know what the deal is, but about 70% of my watchers, viewers aren't subscribed. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button because it doesn't cost you anything. It does us a lot of good around here. So. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you on the next episode.